We've started the conversation on this show a couple times about my contemplations around the band Wilco. Now, this was all sort of surfaced as I was reviewing the best albums list of uh, 2023 from WFPK, which I am wearing their t-shirt Woo-hoo. today. And uh, Wilco's cousin is on the list. And I know Wilco has a loyal fan base and they've got a lot of people that love them. And I am not normally someone who likes to be negative about bands. And I'm not trying to be negative about Wilco here. But I do think my experience with their music, which is limited, I'll admit that, especially the last few albums, I've been listening more to the most recent stuff, not necessarily going back and going through their archives, although I've done a little bit of research coming into the show today. We have to answer the question because I have been asking the question of my friends, does Wilco suck? Because I'm not convinced I know the answer to that question. I'll put it, that's the nicest way I can put it. So, Francesca, yes, uh, who is taking a deep breath so you can see, if you're seeing the video, you can see her Wilco shirt that she has on. Francesca, I need you to tell me why they do or don't. What's your opinion and 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 give me what you think about Wilco and then I'm going to do everyone a favor and make this a lot more fun and tell you what I think of some of their songs. So does Wilco suck? Are you saying that my take isn't going to be fun? It might be. I don't know. I'm just saying I'm, my, mine's going to okay. be a lot more fun. I got some lines here. This is going to be good. So but you, you go ahead. <laughs> oh, tell I me, bet. tell me if Wilco sucks or not. Okay. So my relationship with Wilco is complicated. Okay. It's no secret that I have an affinity for the Americana roots rock alt country genre, whichever label you want to place on it. Okay. And for me, it started in the mid nineties. And when I found the band Sunvolt, now it was early enough in Sunvolt's existence to know that Jay Farrar, the front man for Sunvolt was in another band called Uncle Tupelo with Jeff Tweedy, the front man for Wilco. Mm -hmm. So Jay and Jeff were simultaneously getting their new bands going. Okay. I first heard Sunvolt and fell in love, and then I started listening to Wilco. Now, mind you, this is the mid-90s. Digital music is not a thing unless you do it illegally yep. to hear the music, and or you, like, you really had to seek it out. And there's one radio station in Chicago that would play Sunvolt and Wilco, but not very frequently, okay. especially at that time. So I sought out the music and Wilco's first album is called AM and that came out in 1995 and I freaking loved it. I still love it. I was like, yes, this is fantastic, right? It really has that alt country sound, you know, that the spirit of alt country. And if you know anything about Uncle Tupelo, Mm -hmm. you know, that's that was their sound, right? And with a little punk thrown in, but then there was also some really good and like deep philosophical folk stuff that was thrown in. Uncle Tupelo is just, it's a shame that they didn't last yeah, longer. There, I will so. agree with you there. Uncle Tupelo is fantastic. I've listened, I think they have four albums maybe, and I've listened to each of them. I really like their stuff. Uncle Tupelo, and and obviously, historically speaking, a linchpin in the evolution to alt country and even the Americana category in general. I think they were instrumental in sort of bringing a lot of people over to this. Hey, it doesn't have to be rock. It doesn't have to be country. It can be somewhere in the middle and we can have a lot of other influences. So historical significance, no doubt. Uncle Tupelo, fantastic. All right, proceed. Yes. Okay, so, you know, the linchpin, like you said, and then so now you've had, you've got this one entity that is now two. Mm -hmm. And whenever something like that happens, of course, there's going to be a divide, right? And it wasn't long before people were Team J or Team Jeff. (laughs) And I kind of found myself, I was slightly, I was in the middle, but I leaned slightly towards J, Farrar that is, and and, and Sunvolt. So then I got to see Wilco a, a few times in those early days and little venues in Chicago, fantastic. And then Being There came out. That is, that's the next album. And that one, again, a banger. Loved every track on it. You know, it still had that really good Americana, alt country, you know, that twang that Mm -hmm. I really loved at the time and still do. Okay. And then things happened. Things changed. (laughs) There was a rift between Jeff Tweedy and Jay Bennett, a former member of the band. They had creative differences. I don't claim to be an expert on the conflict. However, from what I can understand, Jay Bennett 
wanted to sort of keep the same direction with Wilco's music and Jeff wanted to experiment a little <laughs> bit more. Okay? okay. And so that's what ultimately led to their separation. Mm -hmm. And then that's when Wilco really got experimental. Yeah. That's when they lost me. I will say Summer Teeth. Uh, what did that come out? 2000, 2001? 99. 2000. 99. Yeah. Okay. So Summer Teeth was okay. And then Yankee Hotel Foxtrot, which so many Wilco people love. Like they mm -hmm. feel like that's their best album ever. I could not get into it. Yeah. I just couldn't do it. Ever since then, I'll be honest, I, I haven't even tried no. to get into their newer stuff. Okay. Oh, and we have to mention too Mermaid Avenue, the the Woody Guthrie tribute thing that they did that thing project that they did with um Billy Bragg. Yep. And if you remember from a past episode, I talked about the song California Stars mm -hmm. that is from that album that made me cry the first time I heard it. So yes, I love that album as well. But a few years ago, oh geez, maybe a few, I don't know how long it's been. I'm so old. But anyway, um, I got tickets to see Wilco. So in more recent times, after Summer Teeth, and actually, I think it was after Sky Blue Sky, like, I can't even remember which album had just come out. Okay. But Wilco did like a four-night run at the Chicago Theater. And I got tickets as my birthday present. And I mean, even though I didn't know a lot of the stuff, I still enjoyed it. Okay. Right? The live show was still really good. And Chicago Theater is just a gorgeous venue. Um, really awesome acoustics. So since then, I'll say between Summer Teeth and Yankee Hotel Foxtrot, they lost me. Yep. And it's to the point now where if I hear Wilco like with my satellite radio or random playlists I have on, if a Wilco song comes on, I tend to skip it. Yep. Unless it's one of their earlier ones, especially from AM. That to me was their best. So your narrative there on your relationship with Wilco and how you've sort of migrated away from them, I guess, gradually over the years is not uncommon. I've talked to a good dozen or more people since I started talking about Wilco and asking, you know, why would anybody buy it? I didn't, I did not like their newest album. Um, and that cousin? was really, and that, yeah, cousin. And that was the first Wilco album that I really listened to front to back with the intent of, I, I want to understand this album. I want to understand the band. And I just didn't care for it. It, it, it. I didn't think it was terrible, but I, I always say, even if I don't like an album, somebody out there does, and it's meaningful to someone. So I'm not going to crap on it, but I didn't personally right. care for it. And I started asking the question kind of sarcastically, a little bit like, well, who listens to this stuff? Like, I don't get it. And that's what caused this consternation and conversation. But I had several conversations and it was very similar. Man, they were really good when they first came out and then they kind of started to get soft. That's what I kept hearing from people. And, and it was really uh, the summary of this whole thing actually manifested itself. I got tagged into a Facebook post by a friend of mine because I posted something on Facebook one day and said, Does, can someone explain Wilco to me? I don't get them. <laughs> And a couple of people tried to chime in, but they don't know how to explain music, I guess. And I still, well, nobody was convincing me. And then I got tagged by a friend in a Facebook post by Michael Young. Now, Michael Young hosts a show on WFPK here in Louisville on Sunday afternoons called Roots and Boots. It's a great show. The people who listen to this podcast would love it. You can stream it live. It's three o'clock on Sundays on WFPK online. Just Google Michael Young Roots and Boots and you'll find it. I love the show. Try to listen to it live every week. Anyway, and he posted on Facebook, Wilco was a more interesting band before they traded reckless rock for controlled quiet. They just never go off the rails anymore. And I think that's kind of sad. And that's a direct quote from, from Michael Young on Facebook. And I got tagged in there because I was asking someone to, you know, asking my friends to explain Wilco to me. And that is kind of the general explanation that I've heard from everybody. It's like they used to, you know, rock it out and be really good and they've gone really, really soft. So I, unfortunately, for my overall opinion of Wilco, I've started listening to them in reverse chronological order. So I'm hearing okay. the soft stuff first. Which is like, is this quote unquote soft yeah, stuff? Yeah, <laughs> is, is this is this yacht rock? I mean, what is this Captain and yeah. Tennille? What the hell am I listening to? <laughs> and so, but in in fairness to to Wilco and to this conversation and to our audience members out there, certainly who love Wilco, I decided, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to listen to every album. Can't do that. But 
I'm going to go back and look at the li- there's a list on Wikipedia of all of their singles that have charted somewhere. Yeah. So I went, I forced myself to, well, uh, that's, that's a little too biased. It's not, a, it, I don't mean to say I forced myself. I went through and listened to all of their singles that have charted at some point. It's a healthy list. They've been around a while. Yeah. They're obviously an accomplished band. And when I say charted, it's not just the country charts. It's like the AAA Americana charts, charts in the UK, et cetera. They have a lot of singles that have charted over the years. Not surprisingly, I found several that I put on my Americana playlist. So I I don't hate them, right? (laughs) I have seven songs that I was like, hey, I like that. I could listen to that over and over again. I'll put that on my playlist out of the 20 or so that have charted, or maybe it's more than that. But anyway, not surprisingly, all seven pretty much are from the first half of their career, I think. So I'll I'll pick out a couple here, and then I want to tell you why I think the last several years when they've gone quote-unquote soft why I think I don't like them. I'm not trying to judge them for other people. I definitely encourage you, if you haven't heard Wilco, go experience them yourself and make that determination for yourself. And I'm not trying to insult Jeff Tweedy or anything. I don't want to, I'm not trying to piss anybody off here. And I will say definitively, the answer is Wilco doesn't suck. They might suck more now than they used to, but they they don't (laughs) suck overall. Okay, so. Such a diplomatic way to put it. I'm just trying not to get shot. That's why I'm being I got you. diplomatic. Their first charted single was, I think, from being there. It's called Out of Sight, Out of Mind. And I thought that was a good rocking tune, fun, lively. Check mark. Put that on the playlist. The Absolutely. second song that charted was called Can't Stand It. And my notes there were, this is a really funky melody. I like this. Yeah. This is good. Check mark. I don't hate that one. Put it on the list. The next four songs that charted, uh, here's my notes. A Secret of the Sea. That's one of the ones with Billy Bragg, I believe. I I said it's not terrible, but it's not something that I necessarily care for. Heavy Metal Drummer. Here's my notes from Heavy Metal Drummer. Buckle up, Wilco fans. Here we go. Shitty song with a decent beat and sound effects. That's what I put for that song. I'm a Wheel. Sounds like what happens when Devo has a baby with fish. (laughs) Not not my thing. Not going to like that one. Theologians. Decent Melody. But this is where the vocals start to lose me. Not the lyrics, the vocals. Now, they did a nice rebound here. The next four out of five charted singles I liked. What Light? That's really good. Yeah. And I put a note there that I'll come back to you on that, that song. Because okay. the point that I want to make on that song is a great way to close out this conversation. You never know. That was their uh, only number one hit on the triple A charts. And I just wrote, yes, exclamation point. So dri- very driving song, really good bass. I love the piano. Really sounded like a complete kind of rock and roll band. Like a, I thought okay. that was a really good song. You never know. I liked that one. That was probably my favorite of all of theirs. It was a number one hit. Should be my favorite. Not trying to follow the crowd, but I just liked the song. The song I Might, I said, good start, interesting sound, love the bass, nice melodic lead up. But I didn't make any notes about anything else in the song. So okay. I don't think it lost me, but it was, that's what I wrote. The next one was Speak Into the Rose, and, and my notes on that, is this a fucking arcade game? This is what parents hear when they hate their kids' music. Oh my so God. that song was not my favorite. Speak Into the Rose. I want to say that's the one where the first four minutes are all instrumental, or maybe there's no lyrics in it at all, because I stopped it. I, did, I was like, I can't listen. This is fucking Pac-Man. I can't listen to this. Pac-Man. All right. My personal opinion, I'm not saying just. No, I'm I'm enjoying this. The next one dawned on me is the last one that I put on my playlist. Okay. I said, it's not bad. And I say, it's got a really good rhythm. The guitar solo is out of place. But I, I liked the rhythm. I liked the song. That's the last one I put on my list. Uh, the rest of them, random name generator. I said, I don't hate it. And then he starts singing. And then uh, <laughs> if I if I ever was a child, can he whisper the vocals any softer? The music is good. Uh, love is everywhere. I just wrote no, no, no. <laughs> Everyone hides. The music is interesting. The vocals are almost good. <laughs> Falling <laughs> apart right now. Uh, music is interesting. Vocals are almost good. But he actually tries to sing a little. So that one was a different thing there. And then the two off of Cousin that I wrote down that, that, that charted, Evicted, I like the music. Then he starts singing. Oh the lyrics gosh. were decent. I like the lyrics, 
didn't like the vocal performance. And then Meant to Be, which is one of the ones that I've heard kind of over and over again. It's getting a lot of radio airplay. I said uh, Decent Melody and Tune, but I did not put it on my list. No, I did put it on my list. I I did put that one on my list because it's been repetitive. All right. So there were a couple songs did not like at all. There were a handful of songs I did like I put on my list. So I'm kind of in the middle on them. It yeah. just depends, I guess. But here's what I ultimately came came down to. I'll, I'll, I'll make this point. I'll let you react. And then I want to go back to what light, because I think mm-hmm. it's a nice way to wrap this up. My final thing that I wrote down as I was taking notes on all these songs, I just don't like Tweety's vocals. He speaks low volume to cover the fact he has no range. It sounds like the guy singing along to his headphones on a bus, thinking no one can hear him, but we all can. And so that's, and I'm sorry, Jeff Tweedy, if you ever hear this, I'm, I just, your vocals have gotten to the point where you're just, I I can't get into it. The music is actually really good for the most part. The lyrics are actually really interesting for the most part. It's the vocal performance that throws me off. And so that's why when I hear Wilco, I'm like, why does anybody listen to this? <laughs> Your thoughts? Okay, that was very entertaining. Okay, so my thoughts <laughs> on your thoughts. Okay. Let me see here. I was going to comment. First of all, I like the song Evicted. That's one from their latest cousin that I actually enjoy. And it's been getting a lot of airplay here in Chicago. And Wilco is based in Chicago. So, right. you know, of course, they're the local heroes, local favorites. And that's really hard, too being in Chicago and trying to have a discussion with people who know music and even people who don't, you know, they're like, how could you not like Wilco? You know, they're from here. (laughs) And I'm like, well, technically, no, they're not from here. Okay. Jeff comes from Belleville, Illinois, but you know, we'll save that for another time. But I get what you're saying about Jeff's vocals and they're not for me as well. Okay. And this kind of goes back to uh, Michael Young's statement about how Wilco doesn't really go off the rails anymore. And part of why I like their earlier stuff so much, you know, in addition to the twang and all that is because it was just like, Jeff was just, he was singing, right? Like he was like putting in, not, I don't want to say effort because that that's not accurate, but like it just, it was way more lively. It's more passion. And Passion. I think there's more passion in it. Like his his lyrics now, or his vocal performance, not lyrics, his vocal performance now is kind of like, I'm an old man and I'm just going to sing it this way because I'm tired and I don't want to, I'm not as passionate about it anymore. Yeah. And back then I, it was more emotion filled, I think. Yeah. I would agree with that. And okay. Like you said, he was a lot younger. <laughs> so, and having just separated from Jay Farrar and Uncle Tupelo. Okay, so Jeff Tweedy, we we agree that his current vocals are not for us. That leads me, like, I feel like I have to comment then on Jay Farrar okay. and his vocals. They're not for everyone. Okay. In my previous job and when my coworkers would allow me to play music in the office, when I put on Sunvolt, they all groaned. Mm. And one of my supervisors referred to it as suicide music. <laughs> so that just gives you an idea on what they wow. thought about uh, Jay Farrar's vocals. Hmm. Again, not for everyone. And even, I love Jay. I love him with all my heart. He is my music god. But even sometimes, like, I can only handle so much. Okay. That's that's fair. And yeah, it is fair. And, you know, he got really experimental for a time, too. The He had a lot of his solo stuff, very experimental and not true, like, or not true, but not traditional Sun Volty kind of stuff. So, you know, you can't talk about Jeff Tweedy's vocals without mentioning Jay Farrar's because, again, whenever you talk about Wilco and or Sunvolt, the other group yep. is going to get mentioned. Understood. And, you know, you said no disrespect to Jeff Tweedy, and I fully support that. I will always respect Jeff Tweedy for his talent mm-hmm. and for making music. Like, there's the longevity, right? Mm-hmm. You can't deny that. And it just isn't all for, for like me, and it's not all for you. That's true. But there was a time in my life when I would go out of my way to, you know, find Jeff Tweedy Mm -hmm. and Wilco. Like, I remember it had to have been, it was like 1998. 
and they did an in-store appearance at the Old Tower Records on Clark and Clark Street in Diversity, I believe. Nice. And I sat outside and waited in line. I was by myself, no cell phone, you know, waited in line for a couple of hours uh, just to get an autograph. Nice. And this is it. You there you it? go. How about okay, that? So, yeah. So I have it. It's a bumper sticker, but I haven't put it on anything because I don't want to yeah. ruin it. Sure. And then I also have another one that was always hanging in my apartment when I was single, but you know. Very good. Yeah. And I have to talk about AM. So the song Casino Queen mm -hmm. on AM is, holy shit, it's, it's a banger, right? <laughs> and that, it, it's a good tie-in to a reaction that Tom had after our last episode with Sarah Jean Stevens when we were talking about if we'd ever been in a band or anything. I completely forgot to mention that I was on stage once with the band Vandaliers. Oh, nice. And I got to play Cowbell. And there is video of that on the <laughs> internets. Okay. But it was, they were covering Casino Queen. Nice. And when they started it, I lost my fucking mind. Nice. I'm like, yes, welcome, Casino Queen. Woo. And so then they're like, come on. So I got up on stage, handed me a Cowbell, and away I went. Because that song is, to me, that's Wilco. Okay. We need more cowbell. Exactly. So to tie all this together, in all fairness to uh, Mr. Tweedy and Wilco, I mentioned the song What Light, was, which charted for them. And I wanted to come back to this because I think this ties it together nicely. And I think this is a really good philosophy for Roots Music Rambler. We may be critical or may say something that might be seem disrespectful about a song or something like that as we offer up our opinions of these things. But I believe the first line of What Light is, if you're trying to write a song, sing what you feel, don't let someone say it's wrong. And so Jeff Tweedy's very own words bring a nice little tying the, 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 the loose ends together on this because it's not my place to say he's wrong or these songs are terrible or bad. I don't happen to like them and that's okay. I'm allowed to have that opinion. You're allowed to have the, the opinion that they're good, bad, or indifferent too. But I, I think definitively we can decide that Wilco doesn't suck. There you go. I'll just leave it at that. 